All right, guys, Christmas is just around the corner, and if you're still looking for presents, the tickets for our live show at the Pavilion Theatre in Glasgow on the 31st of March are on sale now. Tickets are going fast, so do snap them up, particularly before Christmas, when a lot of people obviously be getting them. Uh, they're on sale now if you want to grab them right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I was saying? It was going so great. It was, it was great. Go- you panicked. Yeah. I'd seen it in your eyes. I was like, basically, I was going to throw it at you because you needed the Pavilion, uh, the, the Patreon plug, but I didn't tell you that, but... Yeah. They do. Listen, I can do it in my sleep. Go on, Stevie. We're on patreon.com forward slash some laugh and you can subscribe for as little as £3 a month. There's hunters on there, guys. There's extra episodes, live shows, mugs, maybe. No. <laughs> Don't but back soon, shit. actually. We're going to we'll try and get the mugs back up soon. But basically, you get an extra episode uh, once every two weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, you also get access to all the previous live shows that we've done. There's recordings of every one of those. Stand, Glee, Monkey Barrel Times 2. London. That place next to the Guardian headquarters in London. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Um, they're all fun. Get them on there. All really, really fun, guys. Um, and if you are thinking about coming to the live show in March, um, why not sign up to the Patreon, check out the, the previous live shows we've done, and then I'm sure we'll see you there in March. But we'll hopefully uh, see you at the, the live show. Enjoy all the Patreon content and enjoy Merry today's Christmas. episode. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was just some, some laugh. Some laugh. <laughs> well, no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. Do you get people that come up to you, like if fans or whatever, or people that have seen your stuff, and they try and be funny to you? Uh, I think that sometimes people want to kind of be funnier than you, to uh, be like, well, I could do this, I know, and then you... <laughs> but I, not not that often actually but do you get that I, I, I don't yeah. notice it that much right but I remember before I'd done comedy and if I would ever meet somebody or even when you would just go to the stand you'd kind of like be like try to joke like and that, the way I think about it is like you know how if you ever at a party and there's like uh, one right. cunt there that's like works in the police uh, and then everyone right. suddenly being all edgy about him it's like oh, he's right. off duty and it's, uh, it's the same with us it's like look, we're not looking for a, I'm just fucking trying to have a pint or whatever uh, like uh, I'll go I'll to the show. switch off sometimes <laughs> <laughs> I'll be the funny guy all the time <laughs> I, I don't really have it's usually older guys that try and if they are if they feel threatened by you doing comedy <laughs> you can like, use this one so. aye like your dad your uncle oh, aye, or whatever taxi driver I, I once was in um, M&S last Christmas it was actually in this somebody's doing well I don't listen carry hate money no I think I think you should treat yourself once in a while M&S is a treat and I think I just I just spat anyway <laughs> Sal- yourself salivating at the thought of <laughs> M&S so mouthwatering <laughs> that's what I sponsored that for Marks and Spencer's I week. fucking wish it was See, that, that's a brand deal I want but I know sometimes you need to treat yourself around Christmas and I think M&S is a nice nice sweet treat of anyway course, I was at m and last Christmas and the guy in front of me and his daughter were at the checkout and I seen his daughter turn around to her dad and being like, oh my God, that's so-and-so me. Um, and I that could see her dad TikTok. going... Like, literally. And I, could, I could see her dad going... Eh? I don't know him. I don't know him. And I'm like trying to pretend I can't hear this full conversation because I'm like, I don't even want to interact in any way. And then he's going, who is he then? And then she's going, oh, he's a comedian. And then he turns around and goes... My daughter says you're a comedian. <laughs> I'm like, a comedian, aye. A comedian. A comedian. <laughs> <laughs> like, you're a comedian, aye, what you do then? And I was like, well, it's just kind of like a comedy. And he was like, oh, aye, aye. He was like, Connolly. It's Connolly. He's the one. And I'm like, all right, I'm just trying to fucking get to the checkout here. And having to deal with all these conversations you never would be, you know, subject to. Yeah, it's always older, older guys. They want to tell you things about comedy. I'm like, I don't care. Yeah. The Why did I talk days. to you about it? Right. There's a stranger in m and <laughs> <laughs> I don't care. Do you know that thing as well? Because they all love to say that now. Oh, but nobody will beat Conley, right? And all that. Obviously, listen, nobody's going to argue with that. But I bet you these are the same kinds of back in the day like that. I don't like how much she swears. Aye. I don't like that swearing, you know, that's what you're always saying. You're like, we're fucking well beyond this at this point, surely, <laughs> with the swearing. Come on, you fuck. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, actually, it was funny you saying <laughs> about on the. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, you fuck with the swearing, man. <laughs> uh, well, I was, I was, I'm surprised that you haven't done a fucking advert for MS, Paul. I would. You've done, <laughs> you, you do, do. I've seen you do one or two. You must get, because sometimes we get mad, like, 
emails or offers for, for mad things you must get hundreds of people asking you to do shit all Constantly. the time I think I sometimes you just have to see like what's a what's a good fit for the brand. No, <laughs> I, you just like I, you could just date absolutely every like sponsored post that comes away and then be like absolutely rolling in it. But I think sometimes you have to go. No, I can't, I can't do that. Aye. I try and be quite um, morally sound about it. Like if there's something that comes on, I go. I don't want it. Like Paddy Power, I used to get loads of them, and I'd be like, I don't like. It's one of the things you're. I'm not like. Can, I, I just don't want to promote it. Aye, like aye. I'm not going to. It's like Amazon as well. I'm like, I'm fucking everyone uses Amazon, but I didn't want to do a video for Amazon because I'm like, oh, I just, the night before I just watched, the night before the job offer came in for Amazon, I just watched that documentary about the factory workers and I was like, right, I can't, can't, can't accept no, it. Never it's like, it's presented itself to me in that way that I can't accept that. But what, I, what if they were like, oh, we'll give you 10 grand or whatever, would you? No. Nah? I'm not trying to be like, it doesn't matter to <laughs> me. But genuinely, keep, I wouldn't. Keep prices, Steve. <laughs> so right. 100 grand. So I keep kicking you. So <laughs> <laughs> it looks, it's That's going to look like we have a, a secret code, like, tell him to stop talking about that. I said I don't want to talk about money. <laughs> yeah, I'm uncrossing my legs. Come on. Or can you fuck up the Amazon deal? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, honestly, I don't think I would. Uh, who knows? You can never... You don't know until the 100 grand's offered, but exactly. I, I like to think I, mean, I wouldn't. It probably wouldn't be 100 grand. So no, that's it wouldn't. That's, uh, that's annoying when people say mm. weird hypotheticals like that. Uh, well, that's not going to happen. So uh, I know. I, I, I apologise for that. But there are ones that it's like, I just feel like, why are you asking me to do this? Nobody cares. Like, somebody was sending me like free skincare products, which I'm like, I love that. I have a good skincare routine. I'm loving it. But I'm like, nobody's following me for my skin. <laughs> Nobody, nobody's going, oh, I wish I could have skin gun. like Paul Black. Nobody's ever commented that. <laughs> Nobody ever goes, oh, I wish I could have skin like Paul Black. <laughs> so I'm like, I was going to say, then why have you approached me here? That I, I, But I think a lot of brands are just like, fuck it. Anybody be followers is good. Yeah. And yeah. they have, they just churn at the products out. They don't care. They cost like pennies to make. They just throw them away. But, I'm trying to think. I'm I'm sure I could think of a really ridiculous one I've been offered. I once got offered to turn on the Christmas lights somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> it was somewhere shite as well. I can't Where was it? Wasn't it Glasgow? No. So uh, oh, I can't remember. It wasn't even like Your the town's town one. It was no. like whatever town it was. It was like a specific company's Christmas. I was like, no, I can't do that. Uh, uh, offering big bucks. I don't even think I got to that point because I was like, hell nah. Oh, fuck that. <laughs> But then I see, I feel like I worry Good about exposure. saying these things because then I'm <laughs> <laughs> going for the exposure. But I, I worry about talking about or slagging, turning down these things. It's inevitably, guys, who knows where my career could go. You'll see me in three years desperate for a lights turn on job. You don't want to become an Amazon delivery driver after knocking back the, the ad yeah, for, for sponsoring. No. But then I can see, you know, I can be like, I've seen both sides of the coin here. That's, That's true. Yeah. yeah. I, I if think... that happens, it happens. I think if you are an Amazon delivery driver, that gives you license to do. Oh yeah, and say I, I, for fuck's sake, I'm just hitting the mic with my coffee. Now. <laughs> so I have my coffee secretly behind the mic. I, but also oh, I can't remember now. Do I have to just keep going? <laughs> <laughs> I wonder who. Uh, that's one of my ambitions is just to get asked to turn on the Christmas lights and really? play bank before bank. before Steve. <laughs> before me? Can we talk about what is the 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 deal with Clyde Bank comedians? Comedians, comedians, comedians. comedians. Well, it's like the, bank. It's the the comedy Compton. What does was that it mean? you two ghosts that cuts our hair in bridges? <laughs> Basically, yeah. aye. and but there's, there's also there's people that's not comedians like uh, Marty Pello, Martin Pello, Duncan oh, yeah. Bannatine. Oh, yes. went to my school before me. We could go on. Quite could a big output. What's population of Clyde Bank? I want to see. You should know that. 50 I think. Grand. 50 grand. That's how much that's how much I'm demanding to turn on the Christmas lights as well. I don't actually even know if they turn on lights. What's the shopping centre looking like nowadays? Well this is a thing you've got a beef with Brayhead shopping centre, right? But we see coming for Clyde Bank. Brayhead is like a fucking utopia to us. What's your beef with Brayhead? Listen, right, I'm I'm gonna address what you said there uh, in a moment, but I will say I'm just uh, Brayhead has been in my life forever okay so mm. it's looked the same I'm 27 it's looked the same since the day I was born aye <laughs> who's heard of a thing called a revamp it's not <laughs> like it's not <laughs> like get the money no you flooring. can be the face of it I don't know I would, see that's a brand deal I actually, that's a good one I got offered to come down to an opening at something at Brayhead because they said we heard you've got beef come down <laughs> and let us Let's change your mind this. I patched that message so hard I went not good enough oh my god not wow. good enough <laughs> no, I did patch I responded to it politely I meant to say um, but aye so Brayhead is I can't even believe I'm, I'm talking about this but I've hated Brayhead for as long as I can remember <laughs> see when Silverburn came along uh-huh. 
Is that Everything changed. You, and Amphi Pollock, see, is that so, closer to Silverburn? Right beside Silverburn. No, so that right. kind of that changed my life actually, Silverburn. <laughs> um, and I thought, fuck you, Brayhead. Look at this. What's your excuse? In the middle of Pollock, and you've got the the most high end looking shopping centre I've ever seen until. St James's Quarter in Edinburgh at dinner, which I'm mm. all, um, I've I've got I've got a tier of them as well. Yeah. I keep rankings there a lot of things. Well, here, shopping centres the major one. I would one. say about Silverburn though, it's yeah. it's oddly shaped. It's it is not, oddly shaped. It's not good for getting from one bit to the other. Mm. I Make, always say they should have a wee train for M and S to Cineworld. <laughs> <laughs> that was the M and S, by the way, Silverburn. Uh, that, where I met that man it wasn't uh, oh, M&S was it? Brayhead oh. was there an M&S in Brayhead there is aye. there is aye. I've been can you there still, I've not been there in a while can you still eat a Chinese and look out over the dry ski slope in Brayhead no it's not that's, 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 right, that's, that's, that's you don't want to get into this because right. that is quite um, that deep dive I was hiding there I was hiding there when they had the, the, the ice rink in Brayhead but you're thinking of Xscape I've done it yeah. which is now called Excite Excite but it was called Soar oh yeah. fuck has it changed yeah, and, and then it was called Into Soar because some brand called Into bought it which also bought Brayhead um, I actually have a bit in my show my special that's coming on all, all about <laughs> it's all e- product Xscape. placement <laughs> it's all about <laughs> Xscape <laughs> well, this, what I'm interested in that, it's well, actually about that the one nice. thing I wanted to say before we, I, I ask you about this because my thing with Brayhead shopping centres I think there's one thing wrong with it and it's they don't have roll over hot dogs anymore because they. That, to... That's I loved going there to roll over because you don't even get a physical roll over stand anymore. No, no. and see because you get them at the Fitbit, right? But do you know what they used to do with the roll over ones in Brayhead? They had like a wee pipe exactly thing, going uh, to and so, so one, end. yeah, yeah one so end it was oh. hollow, but yeah, one end was still rounded. Bad but it's new. Like that end. I loved it. You it's like amazing. the end? To just oh, the end. The end, end of it, the bread. Oh, no, I just like the hard. process. It's too hard. I, it was, it was I the was fact that hot dog in it. Aye. It was Bad, sealed like... in, whereas the ones you get the fit better, they're no. <laughs> but it's, I think it was so just... good, no leaking, no sauce gone anywhere. No. Was it all contained? But how do you put sauce in it? You put it, it in first. Oh, do you? I don't. Oh, I've never been a roll over Brayhead. I, I have, but I don't eat sauce. See, Steve like feels the same way. Sauce. Sauce. Steve, <laughs> you feel about Brayhead. That's the way Steve oh, feels about tomato sauce. Aye, basically, I hate tomato sauce. Really? Nice, ah, disgusting. I don't even. I don't even care enough to get in that. Just stupid. I don't want to talk about. It. What I want to talk about is Brayhead. Back to Brayhead. <laughs> right. So Brayhead. I um. I think I started just. I slagged it once on Twitter, and it maybe got a few likes, and then I. I one thing me, I'm going to commit to the bit. <laughs> right, so is it just like you don't yeah, actually hate them? It's just no, I do, I do, I do, I do hate them. But it's not like it doesn't like dominate my mind every day. Right. Um, once a week, maybe and that you know, that whole Roman Empire thing. Yeah. How often Aye. do you think about Roman Empire? That that's pretty head for me. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, I think actually one of my friends said to me, Paul, you need to stop slagging Bray head because what if that has like some impact on them and it closes down then all those people lose their jobs and it's your fault and I was like I don't have that kind of influence <laughs> you have brought down the Roman Empire that uh, is Great Head yeah, Johnson yeah. <laughs> but it's just it's the floor the flooring needs to go not completely go it needs to be changed would you, would you like carpet or what why not let's try something fucking Etting at this point because they've not changed a thing we bit a carpet in a shopping centre you don't really see that don't often see that. Do maybe you? that's coming back around but yeah. I think that could be nice and retro like it's what you what you go to Bray Head for um, I'll go. Na- I'll go Nando's. Hey, you live here, so is that? This is actually, well. Th- this is an interesting thing as well because they're actually there's, there's talk. I think it might have been confirmed now that they're going to get a bridge from the bottom yeah, of Clyde Bank Yoker. of Yoker to to oh, Renfrew. Right. So it's, that's it's going to changer. worlds collide. That's going to change everything. Clyde yeah. Bank Shopping Centre is going to be on its ass when that happens. Who's going there? And you could just God. go over to Brayhead. That's true. But that so what you said earlier right? about yes. how Brayhead was amazing because you only had Clyde Bank Shopping Centre. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So when I first started my beef with Brayhead, a lot of <laughs> a lot of people were like, "Oh, you've obviously never been to this one. You've obviously never been to this one in Easter House. This one in Clyde Bank." And I'm like, first of all, I have because uh, <laughs> I, I go to the shopping centres. <laughs> Second of all, that's not what I'm saying here. Of course, they're meant to be shite. See, you're we shite ones. They were born, born to be, be shite. shite. <laughs> <laughs> That's, that was That's their entire answer. purpose. Yeah. Much like the people in those towns. <laughs> well, as I said, I'm not going to comment on that because I'm not from here. But, we but can see that. Brayhead was seeing its day. It was the Dubai of Glasgow. That's if true. that makes sense. Yeah. It was like, as you the way you described it so fondly. Yeah. It was horrible, it was something that's gone to shit, and I'm not going to say any more about it actually because I think I will 
they are going to contact me, I think, and say, <laughs> what's your fucking problem? And then sometimes I do need to go to Brayhead, and then mm. I go, fuck, what if something, like, I'm, like, with my head down, walking about Brayhead, in case somebody goes, aye, Pat. you're not allowed in here. Isn't it the IKEA is near the other, right? Yeah. 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 You got one of them now, Silverburn? No. No. That's got I've only got one in Glasgow. Glasgow. Surely. Yeah, but that isn't inside the shopping centre. It's, it's a bit ticket. in distance, though, is it not? Yeah, but it's totally, it's... You just don't get it. It's totally <laughs> different. It's like, a, it's like we're a house, you know, it's like a good catchment area for IKEA situation. And just good Sainsbury's there, I know. Yeah, uh, massive Sainsbury's. So, m- and a next home. Ma yeah. Ma can say I'm even just as weird discussing this. <laughs> I hope right? This is the whole episode. <laughs> yeah. Well that's it not could be. for anyone who's never been to these places or yeah. not familiar with them, they might be a bit hard to understand. Right. You filmed your special in Aberdeen. Yes. How did the Brayhead stuff go down there? Um, I think most of the time I think people that come to my show are, are from Glasgow or right. at least very least Scottish no matter where I am I'm acting if I go all over the world I mean if I'm in London it's Scottish people that are my gig most of the time mm. or Scottish adjacent people I would call them like people have got a Scottish mom or a dad or a boyfriend or a girlfriend mm. and they go right I get the power but mostly mm. it's people that understand it but in Aberdeen it kind of went down well so I was just like hoping that maybe they kind of just went AX Gate when they were younger Aye. because they had nothing to do up there. Yeah, and no, that's another thing. I need, to, I need to end my beef with Aberdeen formally because it's it's really not it's not going down well. Well, Aberdeen for me is a bit of a diddy town for for gigs. <laughs> you, to, you told We've me that's actually this, you yeah. consoled me because Aye. literally nobody was buying tech. Not nobody. There was obviously. Thank you if you came to my show in Aberdeen. I really appreciate it. There was a lot of empty seats for the Velman. Yes, oh, but gosh. they just all put the cameras in. It's a, I've used it. Have you ever been in Music Hall? It's like no, no. the weird. It's such. It's like the most beautiful venue I've ever played in. Like it's so so nice. It's like a really old building. They've made it look so nice. But I think it can fit like fifteen hundred people. But you wouldn't think that because it looks pretty small. Um, so I think they basically just shoved everyone forward for Crammed me. Everybody. That was fine. I didn't care. But then I did give a. I don't know anyone in Aberdeen except one person. I gave her two tickets. Um, cause I always you know you always have some like comps in it. I was like, I literally don't know anyone. I was like, do you want these? Cause I'm just going to put the other ones in sale. Not that anyone's going to buy them, but um, <laughs> I put them on sale. And she, so I gave her two tickets in the front row, and she texted me an hour before saying she couldn't come, and oh, I was like, do empty seats in the front fucking row? <laughs> oh, yeah, no. <laughs> but um, I know it was I, I, it was a nice venue to play. The crowd was just not as. Rockous. The crowd is amazing, is what I'm trying to say, um, <laughs> and I really don't want to piss them off anymore. I feel like I've done enough damage, but probably not as raucous as it would be in Glasgow. No, because Glasgow's my hometown, so and that was sold, a lot more sold out. Yeah, and stuff. Yeah, I, I don't like playing Aberdeen. Why? You told me this. You consoled me when I was talking about not selling tickets. You it's... were like, "Oh, nobody cares anyway." I... So actually, if you've got somebody you want to make an enemy <laughs> of Aberdeen, I don't know. I just, him. I just never really have good gigs. Famously, the fisherman's dinner was in Aberdeen. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the fisherman's dinner? Oh, I don't like it. Yeah, I get it. I've done a Steve corporate. hosted a corporate. I ho- hosted a oh. fisherman's dinner, and it was one of the worst gigs I've ever done. In my life. I've never done one. I've been offered a few, but I would. I'm scared of those. Don't do the fisherman's. I no. won't do the fisherman's dinner now. <laughs> That's his passion. <laughs> <laughs> You've got the residency of the fisherman's dinner. <laughs> uh, <laughs> they say play the, you play the fisherman's dinner twice in your career. <laughs> it's done. <laughs> what kind? What's corporate? Corporate stuff have you done then? You ever done? I, I see uh, you do them I've sometimes. I've done a few. I've done one recently and it was uh, it was alright actually. Like, it's, it's just they're always a bit like you're, m- there's a higher percentage you're just going to die in your ass because yeah. people maybe it's like what's night out or something like that or an awards do and um and they don't yeah. really care that you're doing comedy. They're there for their wee award. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's you want to do as little comedy as possible, really. Don't you? If you can yeah. host it or do a raffle or some shit, it's yeah. great. But just trying to do it's not a comedy club, so it's just no set up for that. Or like they're not coming specifically to see that. So Aye. it's just harder. So uh, it's, yeah, it's literally corporate, so it's the other people aren't up for laughing. Yeah. It's just people Which wanting is sad. dinner and all that. It's sh- they're shy, but they, they pay well. Aye. They pay pretty good. At the fisherman's dinner. Yeah. Oh, and the hotel was lovely. Oh, did you get an overnight, aye? Oh, aye. Hotels are so cheap in Aberdeen. I stayed in, like, when I did my gig, now the Village Hotel, we've got one in Glasgow, but ah, yeah. it's so nice. It's like, it was like £50 for a night. Was it? Because it was Aberdeen. No, one, no one's in Aberdeen. Well, mm. you get uh, oil people. Maybe. I bet. Oil people. Houses on they, they just live there. No, yeah. true. Aye. So I was not amazed. Not tourism in Aberdeen. So if you ever want to be night away and to not leave the hotel, <laughs> could do that. Go I didn't even go out. That's the first time I've ever done a gig. And not went out? Ever? No, that's not true. After <laughs> you're filming it? 
Yeah. Because that would be like, you'd want to celebrate. Yeah, but nobody was there. It's got a sad scene, really. Yeah, just, I was like, do you never get like a support act or anything? No, I did have my brother supporting me in London, but that was not by choice. That was because. <laughs> He, like people ask me all the time and I'm like I'm not doing that that's so weird to have like brother duo one supporting one main uh, that's weird anyway I, I was in London and I'd done a London gig at the start of my tour and we did Leicester, Leicester Square Theatre and it was sold out which I was like great amazing so happy with that and then they were like why don't you just do another one at the end of the tour and I was like no I don't I just don't want the pressure of having to try and sell it again so we sold most of them I think there was like a hundred and hundred left or something that we hadn't sold and they were like, oh, you need to pay, like, an, you need to have a support act or you need to pay for an interval fee. You need to have an interval, basically, so aye. they get more people going to the bar. Right, right. Um, and they're like, if you don't want to have an interview, you need to pay, like, a grand fee. And I was like, absolutely not. Serious? Mark Black, what are you doing this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and then he was... Is that how you pitched it to him? <laughs> I said, do you want to come down to London? And he was like, aye, aye, I'll do it. And then... It's like he's but then doing he a corporate for you. Yeah, he did, he, what it was. <laughs> I think you were only paying thing. him a grand for that. <laughs> Absolutely not. I thought, do you know what's cheaper than a grand? £300. <laughs> <laughs> but also he was fucking phoned in sick to his... I don't know. Well, <laughs> <laughs> he phoned in sick to his work, so I couldn't say who it was. And uh, I was like, so I posted support act at this time because I was trying to put like the... At times on my Instagram story, so people knew what was happening, and I was like, "Special guest, yeah, special." Oh, that's really <laughs> like, usually when you do be? that because, like, oh, you know, you're doing like you're doing a warm up before like, a big arena show or something like. That. Yeah. And the, the opposite yeah. say that is a phone then sick from a watch. Yeah. So I can't even listen. <laughs> I know. Literally, it was like. I I said to him, well, I need to tell him who it is, and I posted up my story, and he was like, "Delete that now in case someday I work with follows you." And I was like, "Oh, great!" But it was actually good. It was the only time I've ever had support. Act, the only time I've ever done a gig with him, and it was. I'm sorry, right? It's good. But, not but, a, I, but I'm a control freak, so I'm sitting there thinking, I said to him, right, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can't do that. I don't like any of that stuff that you do. It's um <laughs> I like you're not doing that. I'm um I'm a control freak. And I'm like, it's not my my it's too crass for my audience. And he went, I'm just what I just get get to control what I do. And I was like, maybe so. But on this <laughs> on this occasion, please just don't say X, Y, and Z. And he was like, right, I won't. And then he went out on stage and I could hear, like, I was standing there and I could hear him going, fuck, what what, what button am I at? Like, I could see him. And then he was like, because he was trying to chop, and then he just went out there and I was like, bastard. Doing a bit of that. Like, but it was fine. It wasn't like a bit that kind of stepped on your toes, though, was it? No, but yeah, because obviously it's quite awkward because we have um, happened to have the same childhood. So (laughs) whenever we tell stories, it's like, no, I'm telling that one. No, uh, how, how do you deal with that then? Do you just be like, are you like, oh, I just so more it... people are going to. <laughs> 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 I'm going to tell it if you want, but I'm going to tell it better. Uh, you might, you might have done the first bar popular race. No, but we do, we do kind of agree on stuff. No, really, that's not true. I just said, said that to seem sound. We don't agree on things. <laughs> but uh, it, was, it was good in London, and I think he enjoyed doing it to that crowd, but. Um, I, I I love doing gigs in London. They always seem to be the best ones for me because I think I think I've done four now, and they're always. I think it's because it's Scottish people that are missing Scottish patter, Aye. so they really appreciate it when yeah. when mm-hmm. they're there. So uh, it's good. I was um, you, you talk about being a control freak. Um, yeah. I'm interested in that because obviously the the thing with doing live shows is there is always an element that's like Jen you can't is control a control freak. <laughs> Well, basically, I, I got that vibe. <laughs> right. Well, you know, somebody's going. I, 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 I was the guy second trophy. I feel like you're, and I think maybe one of you said this before, and that's why I think this. But that you just, they oh, yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. you yeah. saw yeah. everything out. I'm the producer. Means, so means the event shy, but that's nah, true. Nah, nah. I'm the producer, and that's all their job is is to turn Aye. up and that occasionally say stuff in Stuart's case, but not. <laughs> <Aye>. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> no, but like you know, so that, that's uh, I, that, that's what I did. But what I'm interested in we use like because obviously, like when you're doing videos and stuff like that online, you can control the whole process and Aye. how it comes. It's like how it comes out and all that sort of stuff. But obviously, from doing that and then going into do, doing live performance, um, like kind of in that order, then you need, I guess you need to get used to that element of randomness where one night can be amazing, the next night Aye. not so much. Yeah, I think it, that took a while at like kind of adjusting to because I'm. Like it's just, I think the fringe is really good way to learn that because you're literally just doing a show every night and you're like, that one was amazing, that one was alright, that one was shite, and then yeah. it's like, how can this be happening? It's the same show, like, but mm. it's just, it's it like just, it gaslights you, don't it? Yeah, yeah, you're like, oh, you're you're amazing, you're the best person at this festival. The next day, it's like you should die, <laughs> <laughs> you should retire, you should it, move to Aberdeen. But you, have you, you've never had a, have you ever had like a bad gig? Because you've 
all your gigs have basically been to like fucking huge theatres and stuff, haven't they? You, have you done any like? Oh, your own audience anyway. I have my own audience, there, oh, yeah. I suppose. But no, I've had one where it wasn't bad, but I think. Did I tell this story when we did the podcast at the Fringe? I can't remember if it's happened about me doing late and live. Had I don't I think you'd maybe done it by then. Because I, 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 I'd never, I thought it sounded really good to like, do you want a headline? And I was like, okay. Uh, and I I went on, it was fine, but it was like late, obviously, Steve and live. <laughs> <laughs> uh, everyone was steaming, but I thought it'd be like everyone's steaming their rowdy, but it was more like everyone's steaming Slippy. their tired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, Soft and I that. got on, but that, I was like so paranoid that I would just like do my full set. I think it's half an hour. I think they said do 20, 20 minutes for school mail, do half an hour. And I was like, okay, I started uh, my set or whatever. Cause I was trying to choose a bit. Cause my, all my shows are just really long stories. It's not as much like gags or anything. So it's hard to kind of chop it down and get a good section. That's like good enough to do to a random audience. So I, I basically came up with like 20 minutes that I was going to do. And I, I said to the producer, I was like, going to give me a, just give me a flash when I've done 20 minutes. And, um, so I started doing it and I was going through it and I was like, oh, I'm fucking rattling through this. Like, you know, like when you you can rehearse it or do it or whatever and you're like, I can pace this, but then Aye. you just can fly through it like that. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, fuck, I've probably, I think I've done like five minutes. <laughs> it's I've amazing like how quick minutes. it goes when nobody's laughing. I know, it's, really, <laughs> it's insane. And I, I thought, fuck, I've done five minutes. And uh, then I was looking, I was like, there's no flash, right? I was like, oh my God. So I was like, right, I just need to do the other bits of my show. I was trying to pull them out. I could just see people like, at the start, it kind of was good. And then it just got worse and worse. And then people were just like, honestly, like yawning, falling asleep. <laughs> and, then, and I was like, honestly, I don't know what to go. I, I, I was just like trying to pull stuff out my arse, like remember the rest of my show, but it was all in a different order now. Uh, so I was really like nervous. So I was like fucking everything up. And then I, I looked, I was like, where the fuck's this flash? Surely I've done 20 minutes. <laughs> and I looked to the side and I seen the producer, one of the other acts, the host, and another random man going. <laughs> and I was like, okay, fuck, right, I've done, I've done 20 minutes, I've done 20 minutes. I looked up the top door, flashed me. I was like, how did I not see that? They've, they've, they have been flashed me, I've noticed that. Yeah. I was like, right, I must have done 20 minutes. I went, do you know what, I can't just finish this story. And obviously, while you're having all these thoughts, you're literally performing at the yeah. same time uh, and you're yeah, yeah. speaking. So it's you're trying to adjust to that. And I was like, right, well, I can't just stop dead here. So I'm just <laughs> going to have to finish this story. So I've done another 10 minutes. <laughs> And I came off and I went, I came off and they went, Paul, you've just done 45 minutes. <laughs> Fucking hell. And I was like... And you didn't need to do any of that? I had to do 20 minutes. Fuck's sake. Your brother's in the wings going, I told him not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Start doing all his stuff that you don't like. <laughs> That's what it's it more of a man black audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, um, I remember, because I came and seen your Armadillo show, which was brilliant, and... Uh, I also loved how you started that show. Just that oh, must have been a great fucking moment. Yeah. Do you know what people? Do you know what, like people always say to me, you should do that. You should do more physical comedy. <laughs> no, people, people don't say that. Like one person's ever said that to me. But, <laughs> but I think see stuff like that. Like you just think I don't even need to do it. And I just danced, and people felt that was a good five minutes of laughter. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought though I need to do something because it was armadillo. It was really big, but I was like, it was hardly. <laughs> theatrical just opened the curtains to me dancing no it's funny because you've got because you had to but you're back to the crowd and oh, then see when you turned in it must have been like kind of like oh fuck here we go I, that was think. such a such a bizarre experience like, I feel like I don't even remember it and mm. I don't I definitely didn't like in the moment realise how mad it was like because I'd just done 12 shows right before that and then I'd just got my dog who just had a puppy it was very um <laughs> Which I didn't know she was pregnant with. It was a very whirlwind <laughs> that January. Um, and I remember just being like, I'd just done shows at Aura More, and then before the producer I was working with at the time had said, Oh, why don't we just book the Armadillo? And I was like, Nobody's going to come to that. There's already like. How many seats is that? 3,000. So I think Fuck's the Aura More that we'd done before, we'd done. We had to, we had six shows, but then those new regulations came back in. It was like oh, start of 2020. So spread things out. 2021? Yeah. Was it still locked down in 2022? Uh, I have no idea. 21, I think. 21, it would have been one. Aye, probably. January 21. No, it was January 2022. Anyway, who cares? Who gives a fuck? It was. <laughs> but uh, aye, so they kind of pulled back something so you could only have a certain number of people. Um, so we had to split all the gigs in two, which was a fucking nightmare. So we basically had to tell people, check your emails, you're either coming to the show you booked or you're coming to the one on the exact same day the following week. It was right. weird, but we'd done 12 of them and I thought there's all that hassle. People are not that's already like I don't know like a thousand people are coming to that gig we can't like 
try and sell the arm doll, but I, I don't know. You ended up I think I was at my peak then. <laughs> I don't think I could do it now. No? <laughs> no. Huh? Maybe I'd need to take a wee break for doing shows but and then do, do a comeback. Because you were posting more regularly <laughs> yeah. then, do you think Oh, I'm that such helped? a flop these days. I just don't... <laughs> I, don't I don't have any... There was... I don't know a point. I think I'd basically just quit my last job and I was like, I really have to like get my arson gear here if I want to make a living doing this. And I think I was just... Also, it was like started during lockdown and then like just posting stuff all the time. I don't know what... I, crack I was on that time but I was <laughs> I was posting non-stop I just had ideas like that and then I just kind of slowed down <laughs> but do you think it's like more of the because you've been doing it and it builds up and you're like the pressure of oh these have to be just as good as I, these before even though oh, when you were doing it before you're just kind of doing whatever you want you didn't, so. didn't really care like you just did it for the sake of it but I I, I think so and it's like I think it's hard as well because see me like it's different for like I see if you like made music or whatever right you can put out a song and people can listen to that song again and again. Say you only have like one song that's popular, right? People will listen to it again and again and again forever. Oh, okay. But it's like with a comedy sketch, like people do come back to it and stuff, but it's not like something people go, I'm going to watch that every, every morning. Oh, okay. <laughs> like, right. But people might listen to the same song every day or like yeah. most of the same song. So I think you don't have that kind of returnability for your output. So if you put like, I don't know, I'm making this so fucking businessy, but, <laughs> but I, I think in terms of like, yeah, putting stuff out, you could put out a hundred sketches, and then people are like, well, "What's next?" Aye. You're like, "What about all them?" Yeah, yeah, they're never satisfied. Aye, so you need to. And then aye. if they come to your show, you can't do it live because they fucking seen it. I've like, seen that. Aye. <laughs> so no, it's, no, it's really tough, actually. <laughs> <laughs> no, what was I, it you I, did before? I was a runner, so like an, all right. not an athlete, like a <laughs> and TV and film, aye. Aye. for who? The BBC. Sometimes, uh, maybe once, was or it twice. Like, uh, a terrible job. That's terrible, 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 terrible job. It was actually good because I learned a lot about, obviously, the industry and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> I'll ask you who treated you like a cunt once we've stopped recording. I it's can tell you, I'm going to tell you because nobody, I don't think any cunt even knows who he is anyway. He was in Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> and <laughs> was, Antonio no, Banderas. <laughs> <laughs> and it was Tina Knightley. No, it was, it was this guy, he's like this Welsh actor, I can't even remember his name, but I'll Google it after it. And he was so fucking rude to me. Um, this was one of my first runner jobs and it genuinely like made me like go like fuck this I'm not doing this like I was I was in, on a film in Wales and I went and I asked him if uh, he wanted a coffee and he went eh, I okay I went and made him I brought it back and he took a sip well, he took a sip of it and he went oh, I'll tell you what Paul take that back it tastes like you've stirred it with your dick <laughs> fuck I was like sick. who the fuck are you talking <laughs> to <laughs> And then, and then I, I was like, that's what I should have went away and done. But I, I went away and made him another coffee. And then he I, I came back and he was like, he would just like blow his nose and like throw hankies on the ground and be like, can someone get that? And I'd be like, I'm like, fucking what? tell you when this. It was just, I think, I didn't have that many bad experiences, but I actually had a bit in my first show i done at the Fringe that it was not, not the one you've seen at Armadillo. Aye, the one before that was called Worst Case Scenario where I spoke about that job because there was a, another job I had with, with this actress and she was like, we're filming in this big old um like edwardian edwardian mansion whatever it was like a short film shoot and uh, it was like this big beautiful house that i had to keep keeping clean as the runner which was just like impossible to do because it was a the guy who owned it had a dog they used to just walk about and it was like deaf and blind it was just shit everywhere <laughs> constantly <laughs> so i was constantly just cleaning up this dog shit on this Fuck film sake. set and this act one of the actresses walked through the shit on the way to her makeup trailer and i was like Oh, excuse me, I don't know if you realise, but you actually stood and shit, you'd probably like, <laughs> clean your shoes. <laughs> clean your shoes, and then she was like, oh, I don't, I need to clean this shit off my shoes, but like, obviously she didn't say it like this, that's a bit literal, but she was like, oh no, I need to clean my shoes, but I don't have time, I need to go into makeup. And I was just looking uh, at me, and I was nah. like, I was like, oh, <laughs> I'll, 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 I can do that. She's like, no, 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 no. you're not doing that. No, no, no way. Thank you so much. Like all in the same breath. Fucking I was like, hell, oh, it was just, but it was, it's a fun job as well because it's always different. And I I'm like, I, I couldn't clean shit off a shoe. You'd be surprised. <laughs> but it's not even as if it's. I mean, if it's, you know, Amazon money, I'd be doing Aye. it. Aye. No, it's if not. If Amazon not were like... So that's what they, you do for Amazon. I've had partnership to clean shit off my Aye. Shit. So you get a lot of patter off it uh, from jobs like that, I think. Because uh. you're constantly working with like, the most insane people <laughs> and with the most insane egos, so you get, like, all sorts of characters out of it. I would, I, would, I would probably do it again, but I was shit at it as well. I was terrible at it. I've never been good at a job ever <laughs> <laughs> in my history. My first job, I was a shake artist. 
A what? A shake artist What's that? making milkshakes. Yeah. Oh, right. And Silverburn. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, Not okay. Brayhead. <laughs> um, uh, I see why you're fucking saying they're good now. Still, still on the payroll, are you? No. <laughs> yeah, my, that business I worked for doesn't even exist anymore. Is that right? So, name? yeah, it's actually quite triggering to think about my shake artist days. What's the secret to a great shake? Well, this is actually, I'm so glad you asked because <laughs> people. Um, oh, hold on. Oh, hold that sorry. thought. So you just keep going. So just... no, we need to capture this gold. The secret to a shake. <laughs> <laughs> It's big shake Clark turning us off. Turning us off. Oh, it's my eye came back to life at all now. Ah, Do you know fine. what? It looks better than it did when you walked in. I feel like you're just saying that. Nah, you say that to all your guests. It doesn't look bad. Looks fine. <laughs> what do you think? Was it, it just is? no reason? I've, I've been getting all that like, Maybe the cold or something. I don't know. Like, I'm scared it's pink eye. Have you got yeah. something in it? I don't know. Hiding something up there. Right. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. I walked past my therapist the other day in the street. He was at like the doorway to where we'd normally be, and I was just walking past. But you know how like some days your eyes just watering for no reason. My left eye was like streaming, (laughs) and I like I like waved at him, but I must just no, not that. (laughs) This is a schedule. (laughs) I knew he was touched in the nut, but fucking, I was just walking about greeting. I used to go to a therapist, and I stopped going because I thought he fancied me, and it was getting awkward. Really, really. I don't think he, maybe he probably didn't. I did think you he call was him just. Like, I, think I didn't. I, no, I, I didn't say that. But he was just very, very like he, he. His thing he said to me that like he on his website. I realized after it said that he only works with gay men. And I was like, that's fucking weird. That is really weird. I was like, why are you going? I'm only like that's the only thing I know in my brain. So that's. <laughs> but I was like, that's so weird. I was like, yeah, because you fancy them all, especially me, and that's why I'm leaving. <laughs> and then when I left, he gave me a book called How to Be Less Stressed. <laughs> not worth the money did they ever come on to you or anything? no but it came on to me emotionally no it'd be like that's valid and I'd be like okay stop trying to find <laughs> <laughs> <is> too much <laughs> Paul what's the secret to a great shake well I'm so glad you asked because <laughs> I've sat on this knowledge all the time nobody ever asks <laughs> nobody ever says oh does anyone know the secret to a great milkshake because I, I do can I hazard a guess no, not yet. Wait, okay. I'm not done. I, 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 I go about my life offering to make people milkshakes. Nobody ever wants one. I love milkshakes. Thank <laughs> fuck. Honestly, I, all my friends, anytime I'm in my house, like, who wants a milkshake? They'll take the piss out of me. They go, why do you offer it? That's so weird. I would have a milkshake every day. If what do you like? I think yours? You Vanilla. <laughs> well, that, you I don't really think have a vanilla milkshake. <laughs> it's my Steve thing I've ever heard. Oh, are, you, are you like more like a vanilla like milkshake from McDonald's? Is that what you're thinking? I hate them. Like a, a re, you would I go to a, real a, a, a an steamed American milkshake diner. vendor I want and ask for a vanilla vanilla milkshake. I want vanilla ice cream with milk inside it. That's what I want. Chocolate, but chocolate. No. Chocolate chips. Do you know what I do? Mint like? Aero. Blended up mint. Yeah, that was my, my mint madness. I used I'll, to make, I'll, but I'll like mint, mint, we'll get mint, into that. No, nah, no. Nah. Uh, if I'm feeling frisky, Scottish tablet. Okay. It's actually not a lot of flavour in that when you blend it up. Salted caramel. I've got beef with salted caramel actually. <laughs> <laughs> in many ways, well, I do. Definitely. Oh fuck's sake! <sighs> Just as we're getting into the good <laughs> shit here. I know. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't but, like chocolate uh, ice cream. No, that I don't. I wouldn't do that either. That's why like most. I will tell you now. Most places don't make good milkshakes. Most places that claim to sell milkshakes don't know what they're talking about. Right. Because the real, a real good, and I will say this again when I have to, on camera. But I'm, this is just. <laughs> to you. Yeah, I mean, we are still rolling. We'll probably get this for the. I think this is. Got, uh, got the now. Well, this is man to man. I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> right. Okay. What you're wanting is, right, good quality vanilla ice cream. Nothing yeah. that's even got a tinge of yellow in it. No, nah, no, no, right. no, no, no. Good quality vanilla. Yep. Marquis. Full fat milk. I, I don't know. I don't want to Marquis, spoil isn't? another brand deal here, but I don't know. <laughs> I used to go for Pirelli's. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, but you yeah. could only buy it in, like, massive tub. But it was great. Good quality vanilla. And then you're wanting blue milk. Aye. And I don't... I don't Take anything to do with blue milk I'm day a to day. Milk, man. Me too, I'm life long. not getting to that in Glasgow. No, no, no. But blue, absolutely not. But when it's a milkshake, you have to ha- you have to have it. Right. You need to get your ratios right <laughs> with the scoops to milk because too much milk, no enough ice cream, you're talking watery milkshake. Nah, yeah, I don't want that. No, you you want it thick as possible because it's going to get less thick. But you still got to slurp it through a straw though, right? But it doesn't matter. It needs to be, I would say, thick enough that you can barely get it through a straw. <laughs> yeah. Because see if it you want to sit with it for, I don't know, half an hour. It's going to get thinner. Yeah. yeah. So you want to 
you don't want it because see if you go this is the exact way I would like it through a straw then some time passes and then you're fucked and you've got the thinnest milkshake you've ever drank in your life <laughs> <laughs> so and it's short sighted what? it's short sighted yeah, yeah of course exactly you need to think about the long term when it comes to shakes and I I did have a badge that said shake artist so I do, this is true I, they don't just give that to anyone do you know what no, I mean of course not <laughs> and then you want to get so say you want a chocolate milkshake you don't use chocolate chocolate syrup yes but yeah, you're getting ahead of yourself. Sorry, stop, trying, stop trying to jump I'm in. Sorry, I'm sorry. I, I need to tell this story in the way that I know it. <laughs> I'm sorry. Okay? Right. And we have to have vanilla ice cream, chocolate bar, yes. whatever one you want. Oh, beautiful. This is how you get your flavours. Not flavoured ice cream. Munchies. Munchies. That was a great one. I loved a munchies one. I like munchies. I was like a good munchies. dime. Ooh, dime. Fantastic. Very I don't, creamy. I thank you for a dime. No, no I wouldn't either. Usual. But see when it's in a milkshake. Right. Oh boy. You, you want that. But if you want a chocolate milkshake, I'd put in two dairy milk, standard size bars, chocolate syrup, blend it on up, and you go, oh, this doesn't look very chocolatey, but it tastes chocolatey. Right, okay, mm. I can get on You board don't that. want the like flavoured ice cream ever. So if you go anywhere and they go, you can choose any ice cream, have milkshake, say, I'm not going to fuck about with that. No. Uh, <laughs> give me a chocolate bar in there. That's what you need. Yeah. That's the real flavour. Would you have I to bring in your own chocolate bar? You could do. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, then when I worked, there was everything you could ever want. <laughs> um, like honestly truly anything you want but this is where I started getting beef with uh, alliteration as well if you want to get into that because um, I hate how I hate alliteration yeah, well. well I think as a marketing gimmick it's yeah, done it's, why it's, was it called mad madness no no need for it's not that mad it's no mad it's no. Not seriously mad strawberry it. <laughs> how strawberry we talking here seriously yeah like yeah. that's not it's pretty serious I don't get it I do not get it mental munchies it's not mental though, is it? It's just no. munchies, so just there's no need. How do you feel about those? Uh, you ever had one of those milkshake like machines that you get? It's automatic. I've never had one, I but I think like, you get them in a good petrol station, yeah. don't you? Yeah. Mm. I've never had one, but I'm intrigued. But no. I feel like they won't They're be good. good. I good. feel like the petrol stations really taken off in this country. Petrol stations are doing great. See, yeah. I, I would say, see when you get a you've got an ice blast or ice blast adjacent type machine. Mm -hmm. The camera went off again. <laughs> the yeah. It's funny. We'll take it all three minute. cameras have gone off. It's, we fixed the first one, second one went off, and then he fixed two and three went off. Finish this story and we'll take a wee bit. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Aye. It's going to be a cunt if I this one. <laughs> um, but no, sorry, what were you saying about are the petrol stations? Right? Petrol stations are really taking off. They, you you've got your slushies, you've got your, uh, your milkshakes. milkshakes. You've got subways and petrol stations. You've got Greg's in some. Even yeah. this, every Crazy. petrol station has got like either it's like a Starbucks or a fucking subway something. or As so, a spa. Yeah, something is. But why is it? Why are people going to petrol stations to hang out nowadays? Why? Why is that? Well, that yeah. kind of feels like. Do you drive? I do. Do you drive? I don't drive. I was going to say I've got this new sixth sense when I know when people can drive or they can't. I was actually going to guess that you both couldn't and you could. So, really? Yeah, you feel wrong. like I can't drive? No, I'm just yeah. driving this fucking podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I but drive. I feel like you're you're um, you're like one of the people that was just like, no, I didn't learn to drive when I was 17, so I'm never doing it. Uh, I want to start. I just can't be Don't honest. start. I don't think it's you. And I mean that, not people that's People have been giving me lifts the whole time, fine. Yeah, yeah, but what are you going to do? Yeah. Stop getting lifts. No, it's you're not a, money. A you're a passenger princess. Yeah. 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 And some people are, and that's just kind of their life trajectory. I was yeah. born to get Greg sausage roll pastry in your passenger seat. Yeah. Yeah. Over and over and over again. Yeah. Steve for years did could drive but only drove his Moz car. I was one of them. So I did that as well. My Moz wee Mazda. So it was like most of the time I've gave him more lifts than he'll ever be able to give me back, <laughs> I would say. But I've given you more chat than just giving you content <laughs> <laughs> friendship uh, yeah I've given you company on those long journeys that true. you would never have had that's priceless you know which is why I never ask you for petrol money yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I say, I say, uh, all of my friends that don't drive I'm like they think that cars run on goodwill <laughs> <laughs> and they don't uh, one of my friends was once sick on the outside of a taxi when he just got out and the guy was trying to charge us and we were just <laughs> put pour and water over it and how can you charge it's not even there anymore yeah, fixed. how can you charge us yeah, yeah. Mm. it was try tried it tried it dirty bastard <laughs> robin bastard I used to hate the taxi driver but you know what they're alright let's not Listen, get marked on this again uh, we can't put them all in uh, the same bracket same bracket yeah I never mm. understood the they have the names in the back of the taxis for children their yeah, no, I always thought it was uh, I thought that was people that killed 
<laughs> it's a badge of honour. <laughs> yeah, the victims. Yeah. Wow. I, that's people that tried to bump me and I fucking took a people baseball bat. Soiled out of my taxi. <laughs> <laughs> people soiled the taxi. The soil list. <laughs> Top five soilers. <laughs> no. Um, so you went, do you remember your first ever gig? Yeah, it was at Edinburgh Fringe, twenty twenty one. Wow. In a car park. Oh, I think we spoke that. about this oh, before. Yeah, I can't yeah. remember what we I spoke know, about we last time. Don't know if we did touch on that the last time, actually. But uh, that was the. It was when they, you could do gigs inside, so we had to do it at that castle. Next terrace. day, next day, Edinburgh Castle. Uh, basically, yeah. aye. That's right. It was actually a beautiful venue. They really, they really. Was your first gig an hour long? Yeah, that's crazy. <sighs> I you, don't know how I would not do that. You've done it all the opposite Back way. Yeah, yeah. So I remember no people into you in Edinburgh and you were doing ten minutes and you were freaking out. Yeah, like, I was. <laughs> and that was that was one of the worst gigs I've ever done. Really? really? I done. I was supposed to do fifteen minutes and I think I did five. Mm-hmm. So it can go either way. Maybe because <laughs> <Would you? laughs> that's the thing. Because like basically, like you know, from from everything that, that we've, I, I think everything's changed so much. And and I think I've said to you before as well, like. I think sometimes when you do the circuit the way that, that we've done it like you get a lot of limiting beliefs because like you know you do a couple of years and you're still considered what's called an open spot uh, like you're a kind of new act that you don't even get paid or maybe you get paid 50 quid in a weekend or something like that but you're like you're earning your stripes you're doing yeah, your apprenticeship yeah. kind of thing and then what's great about like then the first time you'll do like a solo show at a Glasgow festival or a, or a fringe or whatever is then suddenly you kind of you get your confidence going oh no I've done the whole show and people laughed, and I'm what a real comedian. Aye. And so I think it's only then you can kind of escape that a wee bit. But um, but there is still a thing that we get drummed into is like, yeah, you've got to get a stage time and day, however many gigs before you can think. And like, um, what's been so like interesting watching you is like you've done the, the online videos, and then you've done you've transferred that to the live show, and it's good. Aye. And you've not Thank done you. the yeah. the years that, that we've done, but, but you still I'll, managed. I always to, feel a bit like. I, I'm scared that people think you haven't kind of earned your, your stripes or whatever. I, I think, like, because if you did any day, like, gigs in a bowling club for 10 years, then you, you, you're not allowed to be a comedian. Uh, <laughs> that's yeah. the thing that's sometimes. That's an old belief, though. Like, Aye. people, that just when we started out, it's like, you need to do the bowling clubs, Aye. get fucking hairs on your chest. You want to be a comedian. <laughs> you a comedian. A good comedian. A good comedian. Yeah. You do climb mount bowling club. <laughs> that's what you do. That's what they all done. Connolly did that. You know? Bridges. No. Totally, totally. But I, but I do think there is something of like you know, like I, I'm, I've been so impressed as how like you've without like much live experience, you managed to to take to it so easily. It seems. But I think it's like, it's like if people do like theatre or something, like you know, or just acting on stage, like it's like they would go in and do a full hour, like yeah. of their first job, maybe like they would go and yeah. you know. So I think it's just because stand up is so comes down to t- time slots all the time because you're spending yeah. so much of your time doing a, a 10 or a 20 or a whatever that I think if you actually just don't think it through, through a stand-up lens <laughs> it's, it's not that that crazy to go and do an hour yeah. maybe it is I don't know no, Did you maybe have, it's pretty crazy you have to be good though <laughs> to hold crazy, someone's not? attention for an hour is hard uh-huh. yeah with no experience do you ever get do you ever just like doing stand-up and you just think I don't want to do this all the time yeah, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you ever get that feeling yeah, it's usually if you've been doing like the same material over and over, yeah. and you're you're bored of it. I yeah. would usually get that. I kind of be fucking this shit. Again. Sometimes you've done like six gigs in a weekend, and you just and like, you oh, think fuck. And then like, you do like your first minute, and they're not a great audience. You're like, oh, yeah. fucking sick yeah. of this shit. Oh, you're doing a bowling club. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, did you have a lot of like acting experience and stuff? I think we touched on before in the live show, but stuff you do talk about in your show, but. You and your brother doing stuff with your dad. Oh, I, I, but it's like an old Victorian. Yeah. Song, uh, yeah. So do you want to just explain for anyone who doesn't know? We're t- touching too much on what you cover in your show, but I don't care. If it's got to watch it. You're going to watch it if you know. This is a condensed version. But I, I, when when I was younger, my dad was a um, like a pastor or a preacher. I don't really know. I don't think he got paid for it. I don't know, but he didn't have a fucking job. Open spot, so, open yeah. spot <laughs> preacher. Yeah. So is that what you done in your bowling club gigs? Uh, yeah. <laughs> so he he um he was like a preacher and he used to travel around different churches delivering sermons and he used to write sermons. So it's actually really similar to stand up when you think about it. And that's why I had that epiphany that I'm maybe an Apple baby. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but I cause I, I I would go around we would go on tour with him, me and my brother, we would go in uh, like do live shows, not shows, sermons. 
Uh-huh. Uh, we were in different churches around the country, but they were like... Um, was Mark just opening for you? No, he, he, he actually had a better slot at that <laughs> You're time. You're that, Mark. Don't uh, do some of that stuff. I don't like it. <laughs> well, actually, when you watch the show, you know, I do, uh, I do play into that stereo. Right. <laughs> but because um, people, when I tell this story, people always ask me, they go, that bit wasn't it true. And obviously, a lot of we stand up stuff, you have a true story, and then you embellish it to make it funnier. But yeah. this one was nearly entirely true, apart from the point where I'm, I'm looking at Stephen because I know he's seen the show. Yeah, um, of course. It's the, a great show. Um, Thank you very much. Watch it. Um, you can watch it in Hogmanay. Hogmanay. I think I don't know because they don't fucking told me when it's coming <laughs> out. Um, but uh, I so people would ask me if it's true, and I'd be like everything apart from the bit where I say that Mark got kicked out of the tour that never happened. <laughs> um, but yeah, so we would basically go around different churches with my dad, and the sermon at the this time was about sectarianism because it was really rife at that time, which is famously not a thing anymore. Um, <laughs> And you sorted it all out. Ah, it's, after that show, things <laughs> changed. Things changed. <laughs> but ah, it's the whole thing of like, I'm, I'm a Celtic fan, my brother's a Rangers fan, and people always ask me how that happened. And it was because my dad was a nutcase and was um, <laughs> wanting was to make... He, was he a fan of football? He was not... I think he was technically a Rangers fan. Right. But he wasn't really bothered. He hated the, hated the divisiveness of it. Did you go the opposite way because you... No, I went the opposite way. Well, you've seen my show. You obviously don't remember. I set you up. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I went in defensive mode. Uh, aye, so my dad decided that uh, it would make him look really good in the church if uh, one of his children was a Celtic fan and the other was a Rangers fan it's and it would make him look like he doesn't care and so basically you two were basically either side of a half and half scarf in human form I, literally <laughs> I always think do you just remember that show called Cat Dog yes <laughs> I used to love Cat Dog actually it wasn't anything like that I don't know why I said that I just thought the half and half scarf Aye. reminds me of that I loved Cat um, Dog it was I good wasn't it was, it, was one, it was an animal but one half was a cat and one was a dog exactly. cat dog the, the dog was just made. look it up the dog was Hoopy the Huddle Hound yeah. <laughs> the other half was Brox <laughs> so, so, I, so is that literally because so until then I take it you suddenly supported a team or something before that and I, didn't really, why... I didn't really care I think Mark was probably more at the Rangers that point I, I didn't really care and then I, when I was get, being given a Celtic strip and said you had to wear it and I re- honestly was not interested like I as I said in my show I was like I was playing Star Doll I was playing Club Penguin I didn't give a, <laughs> I didn't give a fuck but um, I, my dad made us wear it and then do a whole show about it and it was I don't know if that what's that famous thing I'm, I'm no a Billy he's a t- Aye, that's yeah, it, yeah. Yeah. that I don't know if that happened did he only use copyright for that <laughs> I think so <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I think he really thought that was a great idea because the whole message in the church that year was that they had to like get people in uh-huh. that weren't yeah, already in the church, and they want to say like God loves you, even if you're a different religion or if you're a Catholic or a Protestant. Because I went, we grew up going to a Baptist church, which is not Catholic or Protestant. It's just like ours was like a born again Christian American church. Uh, it was right. just like Jesus is a pretty chill dude. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sunday school had uh, a cardboard cut out of Jesus with like billabong shorts and flip flops, so <laughs> and we had surfboard. Like it was. Uh, have you never been to one of these churches? It's really, really like. Americanized and that that's the only way I can describe it. It's like people would like run about with tambourines and we like can, like streamers on them and all that and like it was speaking t- singing tongues and all that and wow. it was it was and it was fucking in the middle of Moss Park. It wasn't really <laughs> that crazy. But um I think I realised that that was a different experience to when I got older and like when my friends would be like I'm Protestant or Catholic and I'd be like, Oh yeah, I, I grew up pretty religious household as well and then they'd be like, No, mine wasn't like that. And then the right. Catholic Church, and I'm like, oh, he didn't like sing and dance. There was no no dancing. No, it was like kind of more gospel. Yeah, kind of that's what the vibes there were like. Oh, and like you know, Catholic Church, like you must uh, repent and fear God. But this one was just like, Jesus is awesome. There was actually a song called Jesus is Awesome. I think <laughs> oh, it was along those lines. <laughs> it's on YouTube. And it would just list that Jesus was better things. It would be like, cooler than Spider-Man. <laughs> cooler than Batman. They really got into the children's minds. Because I thought that was a good song when I was a child. But yeah, so to impress that type of audience, he came up with this idea that um, wow. it should be different. I think it is cooler than Batman. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah. Jesus. Sur- surfer ba- Jesus. Definitely. Surfer Jesus, yeah. Exactly. Batman's just a guy who is rich, isn't he? Just and Jesus was hot. Yeah, I think we ripped. have to admit that. He's ripped. ripped. Yeah. Carpenter. Lovely locks. A good trade. Yeah. yeah. A good trade. Didn't always dress well, but in my church, he had 
as I say, Billabong short. So <laughs> you can change that. Yeah, you Do can. have one of those necklaces with like shark's teeth on <laughs> <laughs> So you went from that. So did, so between that and then starting the day videos, did you do any? Did you had any other background in performing uh, or anything like that, or writing or whatever? No, I did win funniest person at my school prom. So did you? Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Well done. Aye. At your Fuck school you. prom? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we so, had prom Americanized yeah, Glasgow. Yeah, so did we. we had prom. Um, you didn't have prom? I, I, I was I left before six year, but I think it was, they were just starting to bring in my school around about that time. You still had the discos. School Aye, disco. It's just a school disco for me. Went from school uh, disco to prom. When we you... didn't have discos, we just had prom. Well, every yeah. year you didn't have like a, a S1 disco? I think we maybe did one or two times, but I think they were about a flop. Nobody really went. Yeah, we, ours got cancelled every time because everyone thought it'd be lame to go. And oh. then people were trying to decide if it was lame or not to go, and then you'd be like, "Are people that are like cooler being like, fuck it, we'll just go uh, like for yeah. a laugh, and then maybe it would it would go ahead." But prom, we had prom in fifth and sixth year though. So same. Same. So you had yeah. there was every year uh, like you had I had two proms. Did you have two proms? Yeah. Well, yeah. It alternated. It was no. more that when I was in fifth year, it was more for the six years, but they were like, "You just can go if you want." Do you know what I mean? Oh, so we, we weren't involved in the awards for the fifth year one. Ah, okay. Yeah, so, I don't. I don't think we were. Yet. Maybe we were. Well, I won funniest person and I won best hair. Fuck knows why. Best don't hair. know where that's went. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and I won best couple with my then girlfriend. Oh, did you? Wow. Life mm. comes at you still fast. together. Happy as can be. So yeah, the awards don't mean everything. It's yeah. not about the awards, but I apart apart from that, I don't think I had any, <laughs> no. any sort of performing experience. I mm -hmm. don't know. So I kind of kicked off then later on, pretty much with the the, the American tourist Aye. video. Yes, it did. Kicked you, off. Now you had more before that. Though, I, had, I had a few before. That was my third. Yeah. I remember it. It was the first one was that Court, stop eh. filming Courtney video, but that's actually not me at all. It's I literally flip my hair. And then switch the camera to Mark, and it's all Mark. That's so that's true. really his line. Who wrote it? It was off the cuff, so him, I guess. Oh, really? Well, uh -huh. but then it's 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 <laughs> on my Twitter account though, and I'd already built a following for just been having funny tweets. Yeah, with no videos, just funny tweets. But just so harder. It's, yeah, I built up, and then. Uh, we kind of used that platform as a springboard. <laughs> That's great. And you had like but, Ghost Boy and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. That. So we did that. So we had that stuff filming Courtney one, and then that kind of went viral. And didn't do it for a while, but I was working as a runner in like a. I was like this film charity or something. I don't know. I was working there, and I met a producer who was like, "Why don't you?" Because I was like, oh, "I want to work in TV." I'd always wanted to work in TV anyway, as like writing and, uh -huh. and film and that. So I was like, "Oh, I'll." I'll could probably get into it a bit easier if I just put my own stuff out that doesn't um, really need a good high production value because it's comedy so it doesn't really matter and the place where I worked at the time let me hire out their equipment for free and my wee cousin she went to college doing like TV and whatever so she filmed the stuff for us and we'd make like mockumentary sketches so we made one we thought let's actually make a sketch from the stop film with Courtney characters mm -hmm. so we made the first one of them and then we made the Ghost Boy one and then we made the then I made the People Meet Glasgow one and they were all all kind of done pretty well, but I was like, okay, so I'm like building up characters, and then I, I don't think I ever invented a character again. But <laughs> for your dad or your mom, yeah, and because it's like more situational stuff, or, or like or, or it's like archetypes, like oh, uh, the cunt, the, the guy's got that lives in London, aye, 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 aye. like, and yeah. then it's like just one of the ones that it's like because TikTok changed it. Because see, when I like I love doing that stuff where we'd have like properly film it with a camera and a boom and all that, and like it would be like a proper set. Not proper set, but we would actually put more effort into it, and yeah. then did that for a while, and then I did a few for like BBC short stuff. It was called at the time, yeah. And it was like they actually. I remember. I think they paid alright at the time, or at least I thought this was alright because they'd never been paid before. I think you got like six hundred quid a video at the yeah. time, and I was like, "That's insane! That's amazing!" Yeah. But it was like my cousin filming it, me writing it and acting in it, and then whoever else was acting in it. Um, so it was like wasn't really that much, but uh, we got paid to do it for the first time, and I did a few of them. It was like a nightmare neighbors parody. I did a few of them and something else, and I, I was I really liked doing that. And then I kind of stopped doing stuff for a while like that, and uh, then lockdown happened. I started doing like more just TikTok ones where I didn't need a camera, or crew, or I didn't need anything yeah. apart for yourself. And then that really blew up. 
And then it starts doing live stuff. Yeah, because you realise that without putting in even half the effort, and you're, that it's getting so much more views and stuff, it's just you're filming it like that. Oh, and aye. You'd, and it's like, so what's the point actually getting aye. a fucking boom and all but that? But now I think I need to go back to what I was doing to before. Right. I think it's no. okay. I think because that, because I'm like, not as many people do that now. And I feel like everyone, like, see people that would never ever dream of putting stuff on social media. Like, see when I, I was like, even just after I left school, when I first started doing like sketches online like i would absolutely be mortified doing it i'd be like i can't believe i'm going to post this but then they would do well so i'd be like oh it's okay but i know like people that i knew when i was younger would probably like well, that's weird to post in that that's quite random mm. but now like there's no which is a good thing but there's no kind of embarrassment around no. it everyone yeah. does it it's like almost everyone creates video content now Aye. and it's like even if it's just like a montage of the holiday and they don't speak in it or something they just put a <laughs> fucking fred again tune over it they <laughs> people make co- video content now all the time because that's just the way the internet's went now but yeah. so i think now if i went back to doing stuff that was like more mockumentary kind of actually higher filming production yeah value. higher production value uh-huh. and that that would be good and that is what i've planned to do kind of but i've not finalized it all but i think i need to do that for a while but i, I, I don't You'd know you've been doing live that. stuff as well for ages which takes obviously a lot of time and all Aye. that to, to get right well, that's that's the thing because we've got i've got a show in less than two weeks Called Paul Black and Friends, featuring a very funny comedian Stephen yeah. Buchanan. I'm right here. Yes, I can't um, wait. And I've absolutely written it, and I've absolutely rehearsed it, and I absolutely know exactly what's going to happen. What's the vibe? Because I just... don't know. <laughs> I had to put on an event before the end of the year because I started a uh, promoter company, and I. So <laughs> <laughs> time for it. No, it's not that. It's just because we didn't have to, but I started a, a company basically. It's just kind of be my own promoter of my yeah. live gigs sure. I don't know oh, how it good. works yeah, yeah, yeah. but um, so I was like I'll start it by actually putting on a wee event like this so I don't need to do a full new show yet and uh, I thought it would be a fun variety thing to do people do kind of comedians do shit and friends all the time didn't yeah. they? so uh, yeah. I thought it'd be good and I could, it's less pressure yep. and I can put the pressure more on the acts that are <laughs> taking part who else um, is on Susie Rids Susie Rids the Reds. legend Josie, Josie Long, Long. Yeah, and friends moi. of the show yeah. Friends of the show, friends of the pod, friends of the pod. Was it sixteenth of December? Sixteenth yeah. of December. Well, let's go out before then. We could, do, we could do. If I don't mind either tickets way. To, to There's go. four tickets left, so. Snap them up. <laughs> yes. Is that actually only four tickets left? Aye. All right, no. fuck it. I'm not putting it. <laughs> <laughs> How many seats? I think it's it's so it's at the Royal Concert Hall, but it's no like see when I post that, people are gonna be like, "You're doing a gig at the Royal Concert in three weeks, and it's like two thousand five hundred tickets." Mm. This one's the new auditorium there, right. so I think oh, it's like five fifty. I was very scared because I did not give a lot of time to time to sell them but no then they need it then they need it but um but to back to your your TikTok stuff because like you like I think you did like strike a chord at at that time and you're doing them and stuff and you had such a great run of like so many brilliant ones like the do you know the one I was always annoyed at because it was just like a sort of idea I'd always sort of had or written down. I just would think it's about. Always the way you've. Like, I've got that happens all the time. You go see if you just don't do it. Somebody else is going to do it. This is it. It's only so many ideas. That <laughs> that thing about simply the best. Oh, I'm surprised somebody hadn't done that before. Surely they had of. I've not, I'd never seen it, but again, you just it was such a great idea because I always used to think it's funny because you're so familiar with the tunes, the like the rival teams. Yes that you find yourself singing it sometimes <laughs> and then you just encapsulate that so good and because there's no getting away from the fact that whoever you support and particularly if it's say like uh-huh. some of the best are good tune and like <laughs> tune in public you'll do that of thing of course you know? <laughs> one of the best actually <laughs> facts are facts but yeah that was when I was like oh fuck but like yeah that and the, like obviously that London one there's so fucking many like and um but you, you had a really good run and I think you were one of those people that like because Obviously, when you put out these things now, like I'll have people come up, like if I'm putting up stand up clips and I'm like, oh, you're that guy for TikTok right. or whatever. But I feel like you put out so many that that all hit that you be, went for being that guy for TikTok to, oh, that's Paul Black. Like people knew your name and like. Sometimes. Yeah, uh, maybe more so than they used to, but I, I, I still, still get that, that guy. Well. And yeah. Guy is on a good day. <laughs> <laughs> for TikTok, it is genuinely like. I don't, it's, I don't know what you need to do for people to know your name more, but I feel like it's just you're that guy that does that. Yeah. Like I remember someone telling me, like, I love you, I'm obsessed with you. They kept saying all this stuff. They're like, honestly, you're like my favourite person ever. Like, I, I like watch everything you do for the, 
for the first video you put out, like all my pals know how obsessed I'm you. And then they went, took a picture from me, and then they were captioning it. They went, What's your name? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Fair enough. I wonder if like Leo DiCaprio gets like, You're that yeah, guy right. for Titanic. That's the cunt for Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> I let Robert De Niro's like, You're that guy for Dirty Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a classic role. I'd, I'd be interested because, like, you, you spoke about obviously you've done characters, and then obviously you, you do stuff where it's like, I suppose maybe more situation based, or it's like, you, Oh, you just have an observation, like, that one I thought was good was the, the thing about it's like, oh, it's like you're more after a night out. Or uh, like the, that's some... so weird. See, that one people always talk to me about, but it's like, I remember literally being like, I need to post something because I need to keep up this momentum here. Uh-huh. And I was literally like, I guess I'm like, my one in my, pa- my cousin's house. And then I was like, she just had this random wig and she went, I just did something with that. And I, was like, <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do. And then, and she had a house coat. She had her mum's house coat that had her name embroidered in it. <laughs> <laughs> you can't even see in the video, but I was like, I just put it on and then it's just, and then you put that man face filter on you as well that, like, that's, that's a good one as well because that almost gives you a little bit of you're less vulnerable Aye, uh, yeah. people even if mask. people don't like this they don't actually know it's me <laughs> <laughs> but there was something so good about that for that one because it just it just made it that wee bit more like, as if it's just like but I, th- I, like I think videos like night, that when it? you do like your ma or your da or like eight, eight, eight and like that people are just everyone goes but yeah I have the exact same parents like it's it's so weird because <laughs> yeah, it's like you tap yeah. into something that see a lot of the time because I do things that are definitely based on like my mum or like my aunties or something and I'm like I know that that is the exact words they say I'm not trying to generalise it to make it more appealing then people are like my mum says that exact uh, same thing and it's like yeah wow well, we're all more similar than we are different guys <laughs> with that because there's one I think it was the uh, Christmas or something it's like wee bits I'm just doing wee oh, bits, wee bits and no, that's like a cla- uh, like, it's like a phrase my mum would say and stuff like that and, <laughs> but I think I, sometimes they say that don't they the more specific it is the more universal the more well, that's universal. how you should try and I, I, someone said that to me years ago and I remember that really sticking with me that you should just say if something's really like specific to your experience then it can as the room become more universal and I'm like oh, it doesn't make sense does yeah. make sense and then I suppose that's how it blows up because then everyone shares it in the whatsapp groups and stuff like I've got like my, I've got a mate who lived in London for years that is that guy Aye. that was that you done like that video of and then it's like everybody shares it in the whatsapp because ah that's you and all that Aye. stuff and that's how it builds and it's, ones like that are always good because you know that people are going to do that yeah. so it's kind of like, mm. like that if, I, if you tap into something that you know is so like people can slag someone one of their pals with and that's <laughs> yeah. good because you know tag what and would you have tag, that and tag, tag a friend, friend like this in the comments there's a wank but would you have that in your mind a wee bit or would you would... sometimes I think say with anything that's football related like obviously the initial people make Glasgow one or the what I did one where it was like the police went do you remember when was it when Rangers won the league was it great George Square thing? I I remember aye, aye. Aye. the protests. No protests. <laughs> but what the fuck was it? It was when they won the league. And aye, it was when they won the league, aye, and aye, it was aye. like play, it was down at Ibrox and that. There was all that shit going on. Or George Square. George Square. Aye. Aye, aye. Anyway, anything like that. The simply best one. Anything that is about football in Scotland, about Rangers and Celtic, always does well because you kind of toe the line. Even if you're making funny aye. one group over the other, I'm not going to generalise but like sometimes people don't <laughs> even realise yeah. that aye. it's a joke about them and they go aye we are like that yeah. oh that's brilliant like and they don't maybe realise that it's slagging them and it yeah. kind of just works both ways every time because yeah. if it's something slagging like like the Simply Best things Celtic fans but oh we do do that aye, and then you fans like aye you fucking love Simply Best <laughs> <laughs> so then they like it as well and it's, it's yeah. if you if you strike something with both then you're good and that's why I used that massive part of my show this year talking about the story of me and Mark going on our anti-sectarianism <laughs> tour. But it could be like, f- like football fans don't really have a great sense of humour like you say when you're taking the piss out of them so it can sometimes Aye. you've had pals who have put out football specific Aye. and yes we're talking about Chris McCaffrey <laughs> 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 you know, I was actually talking to this the other day and thinking that I felt so bad for him that day because he was getting pelted and getting I'm like pelt. he's such a nice guy I, know, I, I, very I, funny. I edited the video for him and you made it worse <laughs> but I was I was right before I put out that Northern Ireland bit that I've got to say oh yeah of course and, uh, and I was thinking I was going to get the hate he got and I thought every country was going to love his bit and yeah. so <laughs> sorry it actually went quite the opposite for Mark <laughs> <laughs> Very <laughs> successful, I'm not so much for you. No, I guess maybe because he's slagging both sides. Whereas if you're usually just slagging one side, Aye. at least one side will probably like it. He was slagging the enti- yeah the, that entire kind of concept. Yeah. But I thought, I mean, it's, true. it's, 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 it's probably why it hit a nerve. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I also think though as well, I've got a thing where like sometimes if you sl- if people pure love a thing and you start slagging that. 
they uh, will react badly. So I try and know, like, if somebody loves fucking Taylor Swift or something, I I'll no go out my way to slag you for it, Paul. Because I, I know could. that that means something to you. <laughs> yeah, it's no, you know, I, yeah. I've got things I love, and if somebody slagged me for it, I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't react well as well. So I, I think if you can try and do that, you'll piss less people off. But then sometimes you, we, you can get the it all track. comes back to the classic. If you've got nothing nice to say, <laughs> don't say yeah. it at all. <laughs> <laughs> but the. But no, like, and as I say, like, that, that's interesting with the, the football stuff. And I think obviously something that I suppose it's like maybe a thing like that's more Scottish related as well. Like, there's all there's hundreds of those cunts from Scotland that live in London that they like they're all combined, but oh, the tube and all that shit. And like, I think it's a. Uh, yeah, just just chiming into that sort of thing, but it feels like you're you're no doing it in a way. It's like oh, Tiger Pals, it's like an authentic, like, and it is a funny, like you've just noticed these wee archetypes of a a sort of personality quirk or whatever and then Aye, just... it's all observational i guess isn't it that's Aye. observational humor that's what it's all <laughs> that's about, what it's it's all about. <laughs> you've done like quite a few tv stuff now which is a dying medium i'm sorry yes. to tell you but <laughs> which is but a die, horrible I'm thing glad. to say to you. no i'm not glad i'm not but glad they have... we're, we're pitching something right after this well of course we're all wanting to be on it but nobody's really watching it do you have md that's come up to you who recognize you only for telly stuff and not like tiktok or it? never <laughs> not even once there was this guy actually that came up to me and it was in paisley i don't know why it was a paisley food festival i was where i was actually just partaking and on the eating lights? no I wasn't switching <laughs> on the lights I wasn't the on the stage because I know that stuff was a gig you could get because some women did say oh you're you performing and I was like what are you talking about this is Paisley Food Festival <laughs> so, well, there's comedians over there so if any comedians did it good for you Fair it wasn't blood. me you make milkshakes I, I would do that <laughs> actually this is making me realise quite how many skills I have yeah. <laughs> anyway, so many I was at Paisley sure Food Festival last year this year uh, which is a great festival by the way not endorsed but very good, very good. Mm. Uh, and I went there, and this guy came up to me. My girlfriend wants to get a picture with you, but she's too shy. And I was like, "Oh, okay, that's fine. Don't worry." Came over, I was talking to the girlfriend. It's always the way as well. By the way, it's the classic. My girlfriend loves you. Mm. Can I get a picture sent to my girlfriend? My girlfriend loves you. And I always say to those men, "What about you? <laughs> How do you feel about me?" And they're going, "Oh no, I like, I like it as well, mate. She loves it." But and I'm like, "There's no girlfriend, is there?" <laughs> this is for you. But one, yeah, this guy came up to me. I took a selfie with his girlfriend. And he was like, "Oh, we watched your show at New Year." Um, and I was like, oh, thank you very much. And then going, my girlfriend loved it. I didn't like it. Oh, <laughs> <And I was laughs> like, Why did people I say I made that? that show and I already didn't enjoy some parts of it. So I think when you right. already like feel that way, like you feel a bit insecure about it, if someone says it, you're like, fuck. That is, yeah. do you, if you don't want to talk about it, fair enough, but I do think that is an interesting thing where you get to this stage where you get to make something on the telly that's what you've been aiming for and yeah. then there's parts of it that you're not happy with because oh. it's been changed or it's out with your control or whatever. Uh, that's always the parts that you hate that's out with your control mm. limitations or you can't have certain parts of it that you would like in it or things change and then there's budget limitations yeah. and all these things and it slowly becomes something that you don't really like and yeah. then it's hard because then you need to promote it and then you go I don't even want to promote it I don't even know if I like this yeah. and I also think it's just very hard to know I don't know for everyone but I definitely feel like to even know if something I do is good until like see because you especially when you're used to doing it on the internet and you're like okay that one was good because it got this number of likes yeah or this number of views that one wasn't because it didn't and then it's like on tv it's like you don't know that you yeah. don't know figures you can find them out later down the line but you don't know them straight away you go it's kind of hard to gauge unless mm -hmm. it was pure mental on social media everyone talking about it, which never happens with anything that comes on a certain channel um <laughs> Because they can't watch more, TV. Yeah, I'm, or any channel, really. Uh, you know. but, it, must, uh, it must be hard as well. We knew the face of it as well, you know, which was oh, like I, that. We're like, you know, obviously it's a collaborative effort and there's reasons that things happen yeah, exactly yeah. the way you want. But if you're, you're the, the buck yeah. kind of stops with you. Don't yeah, yeah, you? oh, definitely. But especially because I'm such a control freak yeah. and I always write, direct, and act. So it's kind of hard to be like, this was shit. Whose fault was that? <laughs> <laughs> but it must have been. But, um, but there was like it had a great cast as well. Like Paul McCall. Oh, I lo I, the cast was brilliant. Movie. I loved it. That Mark was great experience. in it as Mark, well. He actually, which I'll rarely say, stole the show. <laughs> I think it was uh, he. It's cause he get he went into his music element in it. He's a good it's musician. Talented boy. Yeah. Tony Tumeric. Tony Tumeric. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that. That's another story. That I, can't, <laughs> I can't tell on this. Well, we can get him on. Yeah, you should get him on and get him to talk do you, about. Do you have more aspirations in TV? Like, would you like to make more stuff? But definitely. I mean, when I'll fucking leave here. I need to go and do this meeting for this thing that I've been developing for so long. That's the other thing. It takes so fucking long. Yeah. 
everything takes so long. Again, when you're so used to doing something so instant mm. online that it just takes so long developing, going back and forth, getting notes, rewriting things. But I definitely, that's what I want to do more than anything. Do you like the, do you like directing and stuff? Would you like to kind of do that more? Or Aye. Are you more I think I'd realise that I don't have to do it now. Like I think, because my biggest fear is that I have these ideas and then someone else goes, yeah, okay, I get it. And then they don't and they they make it into something else that I don't really like. And I, I, I like directing. It's not just a, like a control thing, but I mean, that role is all about control, control. things. So it yeah. is, but it's, I think I just don't like the idea of something I've written and then just giving it to someone and they taking it from there. Like I yeah. don't, I don't, I don't like that idea. I don't know why, but it, I, I feel like it's, I've had experiences in the past where like I've written things and then when it's came out, I've been like, that's not how I intended this to be at all. So I want to, I think it's quite a, a normal thing to want. To, it's, it's pretty normal, guys. <laughs> to want to control everything. No, but to write write something and write, write it and imagine the end product. Yeah. So like it makes sense to direct it, you know, because uh, you're yeah. like, I know ex- I wrote this, so I know exactly what I want it to be. So yeah. I should be in that role. But, but then you get to that stage where you're like, if you've never directed anything, because it's not just like this is how I want it to look. It's yeah. like you need to tell. Ev- lights go there yeah, that yeah, sort of yeah. shit. so How many things and then the edit as well and you're yeah. in every- but I do like that element as well because that's another thing where something can, can completely change and become a totally different show yeah. like yeah. I remember when I was in college and we were doing a thing about editing and I remember the show as an example of like eh, someone had re-edited an episode of Tracy Beaker but to make it look like a horror film called Duke you know Duke the chef <laughs> it's amazing what editing can do just look it up it's yeah. on YouTube I've seen funny. stuff like that like Mrs Doubtfire's been yeah, but it's into turned into a dark uh, yeah like it's it's that's never happened to me but, that, but <laughs> the edit is so scary because you go oh yeah I'm happy that you come in you go what the fuck's happened to you yeah. but um, yeah, it's a lot of responsibility and I've learned if you can find someone that you get on with and trust then you can totally be like it's actually a bit of a relief to not have to do everything because but that show I did last New Year's like I was we would do like a takey one scene and then I'd have to run through where I was to go to the monitor to watch it back right. to go right okay I'm happy that I'm not happy with that go back but then also at the same time I'm watching what the everything looks like on screen but then what the actors are like mm-hmm. in their performance and then my performance and then when it's you, you're like, oh, so I look shit in that list. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's too much. So I think you need to have sometimes have be kind of removed from it but yeah. I do enjoy doing it and people people have you know acted and directed before it, it happens but it's it's a lot like I would like to be at a stage where I'm like if this thing that I'm working on turns into like a series I'm like I would do like half of them maybe and then find other people that I really like to do the other ones and yeah, just kind of take off the responsibility a bit because it's, it's I, mean, I think it makes you hate it a bit yeah or even co-direct like with someone yeah, yeah. and they can look at the monitor and all aye, that aye. sort of shit mm-hmm. I was, I was listening to Lemmy's autobiography the other week and he was talking about that when he first done Lemmy's show and like yeah. he was and he was like kind of there was stuff that he didn't know a day because he had it on his head but he didn't know like to like, storyboard and things uh, like yeah. that and then obviously by the second series he kind of got up to speed with that sort of mm. stuff but it has a lot to do in like a you know like chucked just on deep end. on your own chucked in the deep end yeah. and I guess what was a similar trajectory for you as well like, come, like doing the online stuff and then moving to that because um, like, I, I suppose that's the other thing as well like, into, like whatever if there's any other prominent person, particularly if they're Faye Scotland, I think she'll love the thing we always <laughs> fear as a stand-up is going, oh, well, you're not as good as Kevin Bridges or aye, whatever. Aye, aye. And I guess Limmy's the one for the online stuff. Oh, I definitely. I think, no, but that is like, I, I think I've said this in every interview I've ever done, but like, <laughs> Limmy's like the number one for me. I don't think there's a funniest, funnier person on this earth yeah. than Limmy and I love everything that he does. So, um, I like, if people say that, can't think he's slimy. I'd be like, oh, fair enough. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that. One hundred percent. You've been some kind of cool places as well. You went to Cannes Film Festival. Yeah. How was that? It was good. So it was. It was I, I don't know. It, it was good, but didn't really do what it was supposed to do for me. But I went on holiday, so it's fine. Uh, but I, I yeah, because I'd written a film that I was trying to sell, basically, and it's what interesting. Was that like? It's it's insane. It's like. First of all, Cannes is like, I didn't realise, see when like the festival's not there, it's like, mm. and no offence to anyone that's from there, but it's, it's like Blackpool vibes. <laughs> 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 see when the the festival goes away, like it's like not, like it's so glamorous and like all all, all these events happening when the festival goes away, it's just kind of like beach town, it's a, a wee bit tacky actually. Is it? Eh? But, Don- donkey's reckon. Yeah, that's the vibe. But it's... Uh, you're rubbing shoulders with... Well, yeah. when I got there, I was like, right, time to celeb spot. Because the thing, obviously it's a film festival. I was there for the kind of film market side of things. 
and also I got like applied for some like young cinephile pass um, which I don't think I qualify for anymore but um, <laughs> it was uh, kind of like you wrote, wrote about why you like film and they gave you a pass and you could go see all these films and it's good if you're like someone that likes to gatekeep things because you're like oh I actually seen that film oh After Sun actually oh <laughs> seen that eight months ago um, yeah can. it's a good film <laughs> um, but yeah so you got got to see loads of good films you got to go to loads of good events but then the market side of things was really difficult because it's entire most film festivals are a just total like business like it's total money making thing it's like and it feels less creative because you're like oh I thought this was how people love making things and love writing and mm. love directing and then it's just like pitching to someone to buy it so they can right. distribute it and it's like it's a weird weird experience but I really enjoyed it but I when I got there I was like I'm going to see what celebos are here because this, they just get bring them over for anything Aye. like there was like a Magnum party as in like Magnum ice cream <laughs> right. and Kylie Minogue was there <laughs> are you I, trying uh, to make any of milkshake I could, I could, <laughs> which I wouldn't recommend because it's not good quality ice cream oh really sorry to Magnum I don't I, like I will a take a Magnum. I like a Magnum as well, but if you're talking, Double you want to blend into mm. a full milkshake and you're pushing it after me stick. <laughs> the not chocolate happening. as well. It's not, it's, come on, it's uh, not. Anyway, what's the last you seen? Can Sorry, come on. Right, so, <laughs> the first one I seen three times in the one day. Conor McGregor. Fucks. Wow, well, really? Conor McGregor, yeah. Which would I don't know about you, but that means absolutely nothing to me. I don't no, give a no. fuck. And I just and he looked like a fucking idiot. He was just driving about in a motorbike each time <laughs> I seen him. <laughs> up there, and Canada's not very big, so it's just like driving and it's up motorbike. Down the strip. <laughs> yeah. Um, who did I see? Oh, I seen a few. Oh, I forgot now. I did see. I definitely seen more famous people, and I caught a glimpse of someone really famous. Like Kate Blanchett or something, I can't remember. Um, I've got it written down. <laughs> I like the idea that you would go and I've get get down. a film made <laughs> from Cannes, and then you know you'd have that, that out, and then people still would come. You're that cunt for that. Me winning an Oscar. <laughs> people make glass get out. <laughs> <laughs> so sure. Here's, here's one question I was about to ask you, Paul, because um, obviously the, the show that you've got coming out at Hogmanay and even the, the previous one I'd seen at Armadillo, it's it more kind of like, like straight stand-up, basically, or kind of like a, a one-man show type of thing. Yeah. I think, and th this is something I know Steve was keen to see and never got the chance to, was um, like the first show you done it on more and stuff, was yeah. it like you're doing sketches and stuff in it? Aye, so there was, there was I basically, because that was the first show I'd ever done, I think I started with like, what I thought was stand up, I don't know what it was, but a bit of just me storytelling and then into a sketch with a well known character and then a bit more stand up into another sketch, a bit more stand up into another sketch, done. Mm. Hame teeth bed. <laughs> but uh, I, so this one was just completely, and then the one, the self care era one, the one after that was like a kind of like parody of a TED talk, I yeah. guess. I, had I a, saw that one. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you yeah, all yeah, seen so that one? Yeah. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Very good. Very good stuff. I don't know. I look back now. I think was I don't know, but I, it was me. We have we clicky thing going Aye. through PowerPoint. So that was like another kind of I suppose gimmick. But this one was just stand up. Stand up. Aye. And I don't know how. I don't know what one I preferred. I think I would like to do more sketchy stuff mm -hmm. live because I really loved your show where you just, Thank as you. you said, weren't on the stage at any point. <laughs> 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 Aye, it's, the, it's the way forward. No, but I, I did like the sketch on that if I would, you know, obviously wouldn't bump that idea, I would just do sketches on, on the stage. Because mm. um, <laughs> well, did you see when you were talking about that first one, did you do the sketches live or did you show sketches on... Like, no, uh, I did them live. Screen, uh, yeah, yeah, so it was just... But was it written. material that you'd previously done? In no, the video? no, it was like, like new, new, stuff. New, new stuff, yeah. yeah. They kind of fit into the full show, like... Uh, wasn't just like random it kind of made sense but it was uh i did like doing that and i think it's actually a bit easier maybe not easier to write but easier to perform it breaks up because stand-up's fucking long yes yeah, i'm always gonna say like i'm only halfway through <laughs> and then i go i don't really like this but i like the bit after that i wish i was doing that right now <laughs> that's what happens yeah. in my head when yeah. i'm yeah Anyway, so. Paul Special about it. Yeah. Just on, uh, <laughs> Which I love. And you can, I can't get you can see him looking for the flash at the back. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, you just see him the end, it'll go to the, go to the crowd, there's a guy like that. <laughs> it's in Aberdeen, my favourite city in the world. Yeah. Yes. Great city. 
Well, listen, I think that about covers it uh, for this week. Thank you so much for joining us, Paul. It's great to finally get you in. And, um, yeah. Get you some milkshakes next time. And your time. eye looks good you. as new. Yeah, we haven't actually may address my eye, just yeah, in case sure, any yeah, of the yeah. listeners who well, are. Well, it's absolutely the, fine. You look completely normal. It's fine, yeah. I can't Do even tell think. which one Because when, when you, you, t- you, you you're can. on your way, you sent me a picture and you, you, your eye... I look like I had a stroke. You'd shut up a wee bit. It was almost as if, like, yeah, just, you'd get a wee bit of, yeah, like, you know, like, I don't know. I don't, I listen, I... just if anyone's been watching this thinking, what the fuck's going on with Paul's eye? I woke up, I don't know what happened, right? It's somewhat swollen. Um, I don't know. I've, that, it caused me to be half an hour late to this podcast, which sounds like a really, really far-fetched excuse. <laughs> but it was real this time because I'm late for everything. And I normally lie. And this was the truth. <laughs> I was trying to it. find a way to make my eye not be swollen, but it didn't work. Is it is it pink eye you can get from it's not farting pink on a eye. pillow? It's not yes, pink eye. Is that, is that That's not what I have. No. I've just got <laughs> traditional swollen eye. <laughs> a sty. A sty, yeah. the famous. I didn't know. I know if I don't know if I say sty because I didn't. I didn't really know what that is, and I don't know if that's just a lump in your no, eye. No, it should be lump. Uh, is uh, pink eye just conjunctivitis with a different name? No, I think no. It's conjunctivitis is when your eyes stick together. I've never had that. Never yeah, had I used that to get either. a wee bit when I was younger. It's just like a wee bit of crust in your eyes. No, it's like more that. than a wee bit. Yeah, serious. It can be, it can be a lot. It depends. Yeah. Horrible shit. Uh, yeah. Anyway, anyway. <laughs> Paul, what have you got to plug? You obviously have your special coming out. Um, you believe it's Hogman A, but it'll be on iPlayer. I don't know when it's coming. <laughs> somebody fucking tell me, please. Aye. It's coming out in the festive season. Yes, BBC Which we Scotland. are in the middle of. BBC Scotland, BBC iPlayer, I believe it's called. Paul Black Nostalgia Live in Aberdeen. Yeah. There we go. You'll have Paul done Black. that live show already with, with Steve yeah, as well. Paul um, Black and Friends. But, uh, yep. And, uh, and it, it was fun. It was amazing, it was so wasn't much it? Fun. Loved I it. loved it. And <laughs> <laughs> the buds before you go, Paul. I don't. Still follow you on the the gram and TikTok. Yeah. I'm sure everyone does. It will be watching this. Do that if you want. You're gonna plug I'd... your dare program? I oh, can't do that yet. Okay, sorry. Well, well, well you've spoken about it online and stuff. Yeah, because that's yeah. so. Yeah, well, I have a new show. It's coming out sometime next year. I don't know, but it's just me doing jump jumped off a bridge the other day. So, um, Erskine. No. No. Can't do that there. So the Highland Fling Bungee, oh. Kelly Cranky, I believe. Wow. So uh, yeah, you can watch that next year. I'm sure. Look out for that. Yeah. Sometimes and I think that's that's all I need to plug. I can't. If you think anything else, just add it in after. Well, put it. Down <laughs> I'll send below. a voice note down below. Soon. Well, anyway, we are going to go over to Bray Head Shopping Centre and uh, get some milkshakes. <laughs> yeah, try and change Paul's mind on it. But um, listen, Paul, thanks so much for, for joining us. Thank um, you so Paul. much. And to the listeners, as ever, please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And you can follow us at Summer like Pod on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. Remember to sign up to Patreon as well for as little as £3 a month, where you can see a live show featuring Mr. Paul Black. Yes. Um, and you also. Is that not it a... yet? No, it's no, been, it's been it for ages. It's all right, it's it's been it's Paywall, that's yeah, not yeah. Oh, paywall. Oh, save Paul Black for the paywall. I see. <laughs> no, I see. It. Yeah. And um, <laughs> we, got, we got two people saying up. No. Uh, but do check all that out, guys. And aside from that, thanks a lot for listening and I'll speak to you soon. Thank Cheers. You. Bye. Cheers.